Hi guys, it's Steph from Ferret World and today I thought I would do a quick Q&A. Um, I always get a lot of um, questions coming in through the website and through the Facebook page and I don't always have time to get back to them so I thought I'd do um, regular Q&A videos as I mentioned at the beginning of the year and I'm only just getting to them now. Um, so I thought I'd do regular Q&A videos with you um, just so that I can get back to you and so that we can all learn about ferrets together. Um, so the first question that I have on the Facebook page uh, is from Mike Cumberland and he said, Hello, I recently purchased two baby ferrets and want to know exactly what um, that paste is that you put on your baby's belly that they absolutely love so that I can cut their nails while they, they are preoccupied. So I think Mike is actually referring to possibly one of my previous videos. Back in the day, I used to put Nutrigel on my ferret's um, tummies and um, then they would lick it and I, I was able to cut the nails then. But I don't actually use Nutrigel anymore because it's full of sugar and obviously any sugary treats um, have been found to um, help cause insulinoma in ferrets so I stay away from sh any sugary treats whatsoever any carbohydrates whatsoever with my ferret um, and so I would advise you guys not to give Nutrigel to your ferrets either the only time that Yuki might get Nutrigel is if she's getting vaccinated um, and Dr. Bella needs to keep her still um, then he might give her a tiny bit, but it would only be at the vets that I would ever use Nutrigel and let her have some Nutrigel. So um, that would be the only time, but uh, as an alternative, you can either have a little bit of ye egg yolk on your ferret's tummy, or you can get some salmon oil and put that on their tummies. Um, in Europe, I know that there's a fish paste that a lot of ferret owners use um, and they can put that on their ferrets tummies so there are alternatives um, but I wouldn't personally use Nutrigel anymore so let's go to the next question and if you guys have any questions then write them down sorry then just write them down in the comment section below and I'm happy to answer them as well or try to answer to the best of my capacity um, what do we have here <laughs> okay. Any advice recipes for me to use to feed my boy meat? I've tried liver, etc., but he won't touch it. Any ideas, please? So this is a question from Jordan Clark. Um, and Jordan, um, so if your ferret has never eaten meat, um, uh, hey, modern ferret. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love what you're doing too. You're doing amazing. I love all the photos of the ferrets. Um, and I'm glad you like Duk Duk Ferret Magazine. <laughs> I love all your products on Etsy too. Um, so, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So, feeding ferrets meat. Um, so if your ferret hasn't eaten meat before, obviously ferrets are obligate carnivores and their digestive systems are designed to eat meat. And um, however, sometimes um, if your ferret isn't used to it and all they've been eating is kibble all their lives, they're just imprinted on kibble. They haven't got the experience of eating meat and they might not take to meat straight away. So that's when you need to kind of start to teach them what meat is and start to transition them onto a meat diet. And when I started doing this with my previous ferrets, because I used to be 100% um, pure kibble feeder back in the day, um, but when I started transitioning my ferrets onto a meat diet, um, what I did was start cooking a little bit of minced meat and then feeding them the, the cooked minced meat um, and then slowly making that mincemeat a little bit rawer and rawer and rawer until they were eating raw meat. Um, another alternative is trying a bit of duck soup, cooking some duck soup and there's a special recipe. Essentially duck soup is just um, a bone broth 
um, and you can add a bit of egg to it when it's hot as well. So you just make like a little soupy for your ferrets. There's lots of different recipes out there that people try, um, but that's the one that I always make is just bone broth with different bones, cook it for like an hour or two, make sure that all the fat is kind of on top. Um, and then you can throw in, crack, in crack, crack into it an egg and just make it a little bit soupy. And just having that taste of cooked meat can slowly transition ferrets into eating um, other types of meats, raw meats as well. So you, you do need to transition them slowly. So sometimes if you just throw in a bit of liver, and with liver you do have to, it's kind of a strong flavor. And to be fair, like even Yuki, she's always been raw fed. Um, but even Yuki has a limit in regards to how much liver she can um, eat. So, um, because it's 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 a strong taste, and it's also too much liver isn't that good for ferrets. You just need to feed liver in small quantities once a week. Um, but yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even want to eat that much liver. Some people love liver, but it's definitely an acquired taste, and I wouldn't want to eat too much of it. <laughs> um, Mercedes. Hi, Mercedes. Um, why does my boy ferret don't like using the bathroom? So there could be a few reasons for that. Um, and I actually created a video about five reasons why your ferret might not be using your toilet. And that is... Um, posted on the page. So if you scroll down the page, then you'll be able to see the video. And also if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, I release new videos every week now. I'm getting better. Um, I'm trying harder. Um, and um, yeah, so there's lots of different videos there. But I did record a video about this, so I suggest watching it. But one of the reasons, so you're using puppy pads. Um, I'd probably need a little bit more information. Is it in the cage, outside the cage? Um, I'm just telling me that he doesn't use the bathroom and puppy pads doesn't give me enough information to go by to think about what, what it might be that's making him not use it. Um, but go and check out the video and that might give you a little bit of a hint as well. <laughs> oh, Steph. Hi, Jamie. I hope you are well. Last update I saw you were having a right go of it. What does that mean? <laughs> right go of it. It seems like a slang that is not Australian that I don't recognize. <laughs> um, hope Yuki is doing better as well. Yes, Yuki has gone on to prednisone. Prednisolone, one of the two. I can't remember exactly what it is, which I'm going to post a video. I need to edit the video and I'll post it this weekend. Um, she has gone on preds, uh, on steroids, and she is doing better. Um, she was doing fantastic for the first few days, or first few weeks, I should say. But now she's, you know, she's she's sick. <laughs> so... Um, she she kind of goes up and down a little bit, but she's still. I mean, for for a sick ferret, she's doing really well. And even when Doctor Villa checked her out last time, um, he was very surprised at how slowly the lymphoma was progressing and how well she still looked, considering you know she was diagnosed a little while ago now. So he was pretty happy. Um, so she is on preds, and they have been helping, but she. I've never met a ferret that hates ha taking her medication that badly. I literally, we have a fight every time I need to give her her preds. She is one stubborn girl, I'll tell you what. She's the most stubborn ferret I have ever come across. She's always been Little Miss Attitude and giving her medication is a nightmare. <laughs> She's the worst ferret I've ever had to give medication to. Whenever I have to give her medication, I'm just like, oh no. She spits it out all over me afterwards and just hates it. She's so stubborn. Um. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely not having it, Jamie. <laughs> um. Hey, Katja. Um. All right. So, hope I answered your question, Jordan. In regards to the meat, uh, 
Okay, so Lexi um, sent a message and she said, hello, I just wrote you on your website, not sure if it's in the same mailbox, um, however, I just need some help with kibble for our two baby ferrets. When we got them, they were on Marshalls, but the store told me to feed Canadia's kitten food, I believe is the name, I'm not sure what that is, and I also mix it with Wysong Digestive Support. I saw that the kitten food contains peas in it. I need help because I know that's bad for them and want to make sure they are safe and healthy. I did start to notice that the Y song is giving them diarrhea and that's not good either. Ugh, I'm so stuck. I know a raw diet is best, but I'm unable at that t at the time. Can you please help me with the best kibble I can feed my girls? Thank you. Feeding is a big issue for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people have issues with trying to find the best food for their ferrets. So if you're in this situation as well, don't worry. It's, it's a difficult topic because even if you go on to raw feeding, there's a lot of prep, there's a lot of thought that needs to go into it. If you're on kibble, it's just easy feeding the animals, you know, the kibble. But at the same time, is it optimal? Personally, I've seen better results with raw fed ferrets um, and I'm forever going to be a raw fed advocate. Um, the only time that it would be a pain is if I was to be traveling with a ferret um, because then you have to have a supply of fresh meat. Um, so that would be a bit of an issue. But I know that kid, there's a lot of, you know, Essentially, a lot of companies um, are simply out there to make money off pet owners who, and they use clever marketing tactics to make their food look great um, when it's not. Um, and so it's important to do your research in regards to looking at the label and seeing what the content of the ferret food is. Um, what are the ingredients and ideally you want to be looking for a kibble where the first three ingredients at least um, are meat-based products are meat-based um, and that's kind of what you want to be looking for I know it can be hard but essentially the more meat that you can find in the first ingredients the better the kibble is going to be um, why song tend to be pretty good but if you're feeding your ferrets marshals I would I know that in pet stores, um, a lot of, you know, especially in the US, um, a lot of the ferrets are Marshalls and therefore pet stores recommend Marshalls food and I think a guarantee is attached to the Marshalls ferret in regards to f making sure you feed the Marshalls food. But Marshalls food is crap, absolute crap. So if you are feeding your ferret Marshalls, I would say that it's the equivalent of feeding your child McDonald's every single day, unfortunately. Um, and I would try to, if you can, uh, find a better kibble um, that has a higher meat content. Um, and Wysong is a good option, definitely. Just don't go for the vegan option of Wysong. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the only thing that has put me off Why song is that they brought out a vegan food um, for cats I think it was and cats are obligate carnivores just like ferrets are so again you just even though a company might be producing good foods you don't know when they're going to switch and just go for their profit margins and that's annoying and from a raw food perspective at least you know you have the control to go, okay, my ferret is, has eaten chicken eggs one day, now it's going to have um, hearts, uh, the next day it's gonna have a little bit of liver, or you can get all the ingredients and blend them up, put them in the freezer in separate packets, and then you can scoop them out for them on a daily basis, so that's an option. And then if you're feeding whole prey, um, then you can feed them you know, rats and mice and chicks and rabbits and stuff like that. So 
I find whole prey the easiest at the moment. Um, and whole prey for me is the easiest because it, everything that a ferret needs is there in the body, nicely packaged of the dead animal. Obviously, you want to make sure that you get the whole prey from credible sources, that it doesn't have any diseases or anything like that. I buy my whole, whole prey from um, a wholesaler for reptiles. So normally they would sell to reptile um, uh, owners, but I buy you know rats and chicks and mice for Yuki from the um, for the ferret. Um, but um, <laughs> that's right, Glenn. <laughs> um, so what was I saying? At the moment, Yuki is struggling eating whole prey, so I have had to go back to feeding her raw food. And the reason is because because she has lymphoma, she has um, lumps in her belly, and um, I believe that it's kind of starting to put pressure onto her, her digestive system. And last time she ate a rat, she got a huge... Um, amount of fur stuck in, to, in her digestive system and she really struggled to get it out so I'm a little bit cautious of feeding her um, rats um, that are too big now um, and someone suggested blending them up but I just can't I can't do it <laughs> so we've gone back to raw feeding it um, so yeah, so that's why that's the only reason why I'm not while why why I'm a little bit um, cautious in regards to feeding Yuki rats and whole prey at the moment is because of lymphoma that she has and the lumps, the tumors in her belly, and how it's kind of impacting her in regards to pushing on her digestive digestive system and her not being able to eliminate um, properly. So that's the only reason why. But um, yeah, so just make sure you do your research in regards to kibble um, and Y Song is definitely a good option if you live in the US. Um, if you're living somewhere like Australia, then you just need to do your research and probably look at cat food or kitten food um, and just try to find the highest quality kitten food that you can find which has the most protein in it. Um, because cats are obligate carnivores and really good, um, and the really high quality kitten foods are probably, or cat foods are the best. So, because they'll have the most amount of protein in them as well. Um, someone also mentioned, I haven't looked at the ingredients of Zewi Peak. I, I feed Zewi Peak to my dog because that's the highest quality food that I have found on the market. Um, and she's got some kind of allergies as well. So I can't really feed her raw because she just gets sick. So Zewi Peak is something that she gets every day. And it's, it is bloody expensive, let me tell you that. But it is the highest quality food on the market. And they do have it for cats as well. So that might be something worth looking into as well if you're in Australia. Um, 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 so I hope that answers your question. Um, and if you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Oh, no problem, Jesse. That's really nice of you. I love getting little thank you notes. That's so sweet. <laughs> so no questions from me, but I just want to say thank you for deciding to share your life and experiences with your ferrets. Years ago, me and my son would watch video after video. <laughs> That's really sweet. That makes me happy. I love getting little comments like that. Oh, and I've started a personal YouTube channel as well. If you guys are keen to take a look at that, I'm calling myself Ms. Doolittle. So if you wanted to check out my YouTube channel, my personal YouTube channel, I'm going to be posting more on that channel. Um, and also like the Party Ferret YouTube channel as well because I'm going to be posting more ferret videos too. But for my personal channel, it's kind of like more of my personal journey and my idea is to, my dream is to get a motorhome, which I've been looking into, and traveling around Australia 
and going to different animal sanctuaries and talking to environmentalists and interviewing them and just making videos, weaving in my personal story um, into animal stories and environmental stories and um, just exploring how I can bridge the gap between humans and animals, why we're so disconnected from nature and just kind of, I guess, connecting it all together again. Um, that's, that's kind of my mission moving forward. So that's a little project on the side that I'm working on um, and I'm hoping to make it a reality soon. I have started volunteering for Sydney Wildlife as well and um, have been working with lots of different wildlife animals and I'm just loving it. I just love animals and I want to dedicate my life to animals and to nature and concert and um, to environmentalism as well. So yeah, that's my passion. And of course, ferrets. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'd love to have you join me, Jesse. <laughs> and I do get a little bit more personal, but I've always kind of shared my story with you guys. So if you like that kind of stuff, then definitely um, subscribe to Ms. Doolittle. M.S. Doolittle, like how you said, how it was Dr. Do Doolittle. I just, the reason why I called myself that is because whenever you, someone used to ask me what if if i could have a superpower what would it be i would always be like i want to talk to animals like Mr. like dr doolittle so that's why i named my channel after that so feel free to join me i would love for you guys to join me there um but back to ferrets <laughs> um let's see what other questions we have uh what is considered a beast for a ferret? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, hmm. I'd have to see examples of photos, Don. Um, but generally, you want to, when you see a ferret, you kind of, it, you can't, I don't know, it's hard to say because some ferrets are smaller and some ferrets are bigger. You obviously don't want to see a ferret that's visibly fat unless it's a, a Jill that's pregnant um, then that's okay I guess but it you know I had a ferret that was nearly two kilos I think that was bear and he was a huge ferret but if a ferret that is the size of Yuki was close to two kilos that would be really really fat so it really depends on the weight of the ferret and how big they are I, that because it's kind of hard to say oh yeah I don't know you can't really it just depends on how big they are so um, yeah it's that's a very general question um, but essentially you with any animal you want to kind of be able to see um, a little bit of a waste when you look at them from above um, you know, you see these dogs and dogs, a lot of dogs are obese, um, a lot of dogs are overweight and you want to see a little bit of a waste. So with a ferret, you kind of want to, you, you don't want to see them, you know, go round in any sense. You want to see them have a little bit of a waste. You want to see that, that, you know, if they've been exercising properly, you want to see a little bit of muscle on their legs and in their shoulders. Um... So yeah, stairs are good for ferrets or just taking them for walks, um, having a lot of playtime. It's hard to answer this question without seeing photos. So if you guys think your ferret is obese, then post them on the page um, or send me a message and then I can take a look at it and um, kind of make a judgment from there. But it's kind of hard to answer that question. Now, are you guys enjoying um, this live, Facebook live, <laughs> um, cause I need feedback. <laughs> I don't know when I should stop or if I should continue on. <laughs> As your ferrets rage cage after 10 hours out of cage. Um, Glenn, I don't get it. <laughs> um, how do I train my ferret to stop biting? Catcher, there's a few different, what kind of biting, 
um, I, are we talking about? Because ferrets, when they play, they'll naturally kind of mouth or give a light nip. And I don't consider that biting necessarily. Even with my dog, you know, when I play with her, she'll kind of mouth and do little nips. But I don't consider that biting because it's not hurting. It's not vicious. Um, so what do you consider biting? Is it to the blood? Um, is it, you know, the lick, lick, chomp? Um, there's lots of different reasons why ferrets bite. Some, some, some ferrets bite out of fear. Um, a lot of the more aggressive bites would be out of fear. Um, and so you would have to kind of get to the bottom of what is the reason behind that type of behavior to be able to say how to train them out of it. If it's a fear-based bite and they're really biting out, biting down on you, it just means that they don't trust you. So how can you win that trust over your ferret? So there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to um, to training your ferrets and teaching them not to bite and teaching them to trust you as well. Um, and I've actually written an ebook on how to stop your ferret biting you, and it lists a few, a lot of different reasons why ferrets bite. So if you wanted to read up more about it, then go check it out. It's on the Ferret World website. Um, so yeah, um, but there's lots of different reasons for biting. <coughs> Oh, great. I'm glad everyone's enjoying it. Oh, my God. Var Varsian. Varsian. My ferret, Yuki, I've called her the rug muncher. And I know that's a little bit naughty as well in some spheres. <laughs> but she is a rug muncher. And she will destroy carpets just pulling out the threads. And she's done it ever since she was a baby. But one thing... I started kind of trying to understand why she would do that um, and and one of the reasons so you guys know that I've gone through a little bit of a tough time okay a very tough time over the past year and so you know while I was going through all my stuff you know Yuki wasn't getting as much time out I wasn't spending as much time with her and I found that her Rug munching behavior got worse. And so when, when I started going, okay, I'm going to spend more time with you. I'm actually going to be present with you when you're out of the cage. And I'm actually going to, you know, be present on you and present with you and spend time with you. Like really, really spend time with her and play with her. That's when the rug munching stopped. As soon as I take my eye off her, she sometimes crawls into the corner again and tries to rug munch again. But... Um, it's kind of, again, it's important to get to the bottom of the behavior. Why are, why are the ferrets doing that? Is it because they want attention? Is it because they're bored? Um, is there like an underlying issue? Are they in pain and they're trying to tell you that they're in pain? There could be different reasons. So it's really important for us as ferret owners to get to know our ferrets really, really well and try to observe them and think about, think like a ferret. Why would my ferret be acting out this way? What is behind this behavior? What do I need to do to help them? Um, and what do I need to do? What is causing this behavior? And what can I do to, to either distract them and teach them to do something else or to eliminate this behavior completely? So it's really, yeah, so it's really important to kind of spend time with our ferrets and think about what it is that might be um, the underlying behavior there. My male puppy is maybe six, seven months old and is showing a yellow on his white fur under his neck, adrenal. He's six or seven months old and is showing a yellow on his white fur under his neck, adrenal. Not necessarily, Glenn. Um, if he's six or seven months old, has he been desexed? It is probably my first question because if he's not desexed, he could be going into rut, um, into season, and that's when male ferrets yellow on his white foot, and especially al albino ferrets, um, you'll notice their, their, their fur change because they start secreting a lot more oils out of their glands. Their smell, oh, if you ever smell a ferret that is in rut, that's in season, 
it is not nice. <laughs> um, and that's because their hormones are changing. Their sex hormones are kicking in. So um, that could be why if your ferret isn't desexed um, or hasn't got the implant to chemically desex it or um, anything like that, then that's that could be what you're experiencing. But also, ferrets change color seasonally as well. You know, sometimes you get um, a you might get a chocolate ferret that turns into a different color the next season when they grow their winter fur. Um, sometimes white albino ferrets turn a little bit yellow um, at certain times of the year as well. Actually, I think it was the albino ferret or I can't remember what it was, but back in the day, the name for a white ferret was a ur urine stained something urine stains. So they've always had a tendency, albino ferrets, white ferrets have always had a tendency to go a little bit yellow and um, Yuki, I think it's in spring and summer, her tail goes really yellow. So it's quite funny seeing her white fur and then her, her yellow tail. So it could be something like that. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons why a ferret might change color. It could be seasonal, um, it could be, you know, I wouldn't go to the conclusion saying that it's adrenal, I, just because the fur under his neck is turning um, yellow, it could be, my first question would be, is the ferret desexed? It is, so, I mean, if you're, if you're, one also one thing that I want to say guys just because I'm saying lots of stuff doesn't mean you should take my, my advice if you're worried about your ferret if you have an inclination that um, something might be wrong listen to your intuition and take your ferret to a knowledgeable ferret vet, vet. that is really really important um, that we take our ferrets to the vets to not ferret knowledgeable vets um, because it's important for us to find the right vets um, because Otherwise, it could be a costly mistake not taking them to the right vet. Uh, it, I experienced that myself when um, with our first ferret that me and my ex got. And it was for an intestinal blockage. And um, when I went to this vet that hadn't had experience with ferrets, he said, oh, she's not eating. Come back in three days and we'll see if she gets better. But then I was like, oh, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> so I took, so I found a, so that's when I found Dr. David Vella, who I've been going to ever since. He's one of the best ferret vets in Australia. And um, that's when he was like, if you had waited three days, she would have been dead. She needs to go and have an operation because she has an intestinal blockage. So it's really, really important to find the right vet. Um, so if you guys at any stage feel like there is um, something wrong with your ferret, just take them to the vet. It's really important to take them to a vet. Um, I'm loving the fact that you guys are jumping on. I'm, I'm having trouble catching up, uh, struggling to um, catch up with all these questions that are coming through. I think we might be on here all night. <laughs> um, my crazy bunch are as much individuals as humans are. Yeah, all ferrets are individuals. It's crazy. Um, all of all of the ferrets that I've had, they've all had different personalities, different little quirks. Um, like Bear, for example, he had a thing for noses. I'm pretty sure, um, you know, a few years back, I used to show some of the bites he used to land on my nose um, in some of the videos. So he loved noses. So we were very cautious with having him around our face. <laughs> Binksy was a little individual in individual lady um she she was very happy to spend time on her own and just wander around and do her own thing but when she got sick i always had a bond with her binksy i felt like i always had the strongest bond with her we just understood each other i knew that she wanted she was happy doing her own thing i respected that I didn't force her to have cuddles because I knew how much it just wasn't right for her because she was such an individual little ferret. But when she got sick, 
she actually, I'll never forget the first time she actually climbed up my leg to, she actually climbed up my leg and curled up in my lap and it just showed that the, that I was right that we had such a strong bond all along and we just understood each other and by the end when she was sick she would just seek comfort from me which was the sweetest thing and I'll never forget that um, and Yuki Miss Yuki that I have now even though she's sick and over seven years old she's a brat <laughs> She's a stubborn little brat, <laughs> but I love her for it so much. Uh, she's a crazy girl, and she's always been the little brat. <laughs> so they all have individual personalities. Um, hi, Aiden. Hi, Steph. I've heard from several sources that a ferret whose tail has has a grapeish smell is normal. Is that true, and why is that so? Um, I've heard of this as well, and to be honest, when you pick up a ferret, they smell of lots of different things. Once you get used to the ferret smell, and that's not overpowering, you start to smell their fur, and they're like, mmm, they smell like Cheetos today, or mmm, you smell like perfume. Did you go out on a date last night? Um, they just, for me personally, they just always have a different smell when I pick them up, and it's the strangest thing. But also, um, today I watched a video with Dr. Karen Back Becker, and there's a lot of research coming out in regards to um, the scents that we use in our homes and how it affects our endocrine systems and how it has affected endocrine systems of test animals as well. And it's really advised to cut down on nicely smelling scents and sprays and scented candles as much as possible. Because not only do, do, do the scents, you know, land on the animal, but then they start cleaning themselves. And any chemicals that are found within those scents, it all gets ingested. And a lot of the um, scents that are sold in the mar on the market uh, contain chemicals that are carcinogenic. So it's important to reduce the amount of smelly things that we have around our ferrets. And also ferrets are very um, uh, sensitive to chemicals in general. So even if you're doing the washing up, um, you know, washing their blankets, always use nat natural washing powders as much as you can because the chemicals in washing powders and the scents you know that's very overpowering for a ferret who's one of it, one of their primary senses is their smell that's why they're always sniffing at the ground and sniffing things so it's really important that we use really natural um, products with our ferrets when washing their bedding or anything like that um, and try to reduce the amount of scented candles and sprays um, that we use in our house as well because that lands on their fur, the chemicals land, land on their fur, they lick it while cleaning themselves and it all ends up in their systems too and dogs and cats too so if you have any other animals in the house you don't want to be causing problems down the line. Um, so yeah, just on that topic, on the topic of grape smell, I thought I would uh, jump onto that and let you know about those um, different chemicals that we use in everyday products. <laughs> Both of my parents, Nico and Emma, are obsessed with licking my nose. <laughs> they don't ever bite it, but they love licking it no matter what time of day or where I've been. <laughs> ferrets, you know, when I was in the Czech Republic, um, part of the Ferret Olympics, I went to a ferret show and they had a Ferret Olympics there and part of the um, Olympics was how long a ferret could lick their owner's face for. So <laughs> it was very funny to see and the owner's face would get a little bit red and raw and painful by the end of it. But ferrets really do enjoy licking and kissing us and Yuki does too and all pretty much all of my ferrets have. Apart from Bear, he'd lick and then he'd go for go for gold with my nose. Little bastard. <laughs> um so yeah ferrets I don't know what that behaviour is and what you know what is behind it. We take it as an 
is a, is an, an affectionate sign that they do like us, that they do love us. And you know, when you see ferrets together, they they might lick each other, and that might be a sign of affection, maybe um, or respect. Um, but you know, until we have some kind of good behavioral study studies on ferrets, I don't think we can really know um, what it means. But I think it is affection and. Yeah, I think it is affection. I would say that it is affection, but again, it's something that I feel needs to be studied a little bit more because I could be completely wrong. You just never know. Yeah, it could be grooming, exactly. Like when kids are babies, when kids are in the nest with their mothers, their mother will groom them. So it could be a similar little thing that ferrets do to us. Um... <laughs> Luna loves to bite your feet. Oh yes, I've had quite a few nips on the feet in my day. <laughs> um, so I might stop at that. It's lovely catching up with you guys. I really, really enjoy doing these Facebook Lives and it's so nice to catch up with the Ferret World community and see your faces um, and chat to you and interact with you guys. One of the next steps that I would love to do is to meet you guys in person. Um, I would love to do ferret meetups and meet more ferret owners. Let me know if that is something that you guys would be keen on. Obviously, we would start off in Australia um, and in, in Sydney in particular. But once I get my motor home, I'll be traveling all around Australia. And then we could maybe organize meetups all around Australia. So, um so yeah, let me know if that's something that you guys are keen on. Obviously, I would love to travel to the United States and more to Europe more and do meetups all over the world, but we're not at that stage just yet, guys. I need more members to be um, joining the membership. <laughs> and I need you guys to buy more Ferret World products <laughs> before that ever happens. <laughs> so, and... Make sure that you guys check out the latest um, Duk Duk Ferret magazine. It's very interesting, slightly controversial, I know. Um, but it's definitely worth reading. And, I, and you know, I do. we do mention Dr. Henneke on the cover, but that doesn't mean that we endorse her entirely. Um, when we read through her article, we did question some of her... Um, you know, her, her her ideas around ferret behavior. Um, and that's why we also did an article, Roseanne, who is one of the article writers and editors for Duk Duk Ferret magazine, um, her and Courtney, who are very into science, and Roseanne's actually a scientist herself. She actually um, wrote a... Um, an article kind of disputing and questioning some of um, Dr. Haneke's um, hypothesis, I guess. So if you want to grab a copy of the latest Duk Duk Ferret and Ferret magazine and read about it, it would be great for you to join us as Ferret World members. It's either $7 a month or or sixty-seven dollars for a year, so it's really not that much, and you get some incredible content and the best research that we can find, and the best ferret information. Especially if you're an experienced ferret owner looking for new things to read about ferrets, because a lot of the stuff online is just repetition. We're actually looking at the most recent um, scientific um, research, we're interviewing vets from around the world, and we're looking for more information on ferrets to help them live longer, happier, and healthier lives. So we would love to see you guys join as Ferret World members. Um, so yes, so I'm going to leave you there. I'm sorry if I haven't answered everyone's questions today, but I have spent a little bit of time on this Facebook Live, and I, I'm sure some of you are getting bored of seeing my face. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to leave you there and make you want more next time. <laughs> I'm going to try to do this every Friday. Um, so if you want more, then let me know, um, and I would love to see you more frequently. Alrighty, so love you guys lots. Um, 
Mwah! Lots of kisses to you from all over the world. I love our community and I will see you next week on this next Facebook Live. Bye!